Well, he always knew we'd get the high standard pistols one of these days in the Millsurf garage. Here we got the high standard Supermatic Citation Model 104, circa 1963. It's a Dealey Plaza Special. I'm going to cut to the chase right now. I don't know much about high standard. I don't know much about the Supermatics. Any of these high standard pistol models or accessories, because there's a ton of stuff. But I have to do a video on this pistol. Because I just absolutely love it. So, here we go. Yeah, it's true. I don't know anything about these things. I have this pistol um, maybe about a year and change. I love shooting it. For some reason, I'm just blown away by the incredible amount of uh, just information, accessories, different things, different models. It's like I, I just can't seem to absorb a lot of information about these. They're always a big mystery to me, but I keep looking at it, keep saying I'm going to do a video on it. And I'm like, I just don't, I don't have enough. What am I going to talk about? I, I, the people that are watching the video are going to know more than you. How are you going to do a video on it? Well, you know what, at this point... Um, it is what it is. <laughs> so let's just get started. So, high standard. Carl Gustav Swabilius. He's the man who starts the company. We've talked about Swabilius before. I think we were talking with uh, talking about a Marlin sight. It was a special kind of sight on a on a Marlin, like a twenty two, like a gallery gun. We were doing, and that this is where we first got into Swabilius. Well, here's a story with this guy. This guy was born in 1879 in Sweden, and he died in uh, 1948, 69 years old. In the U.S., he immigrated to the United States. He worked for Marlin Winchester. This guy was a prolific firearms designer. He was one of the highest paid executives in the United States around the time of World War II. That's, that's a big, uh, that right there is a, a badge on your chest right there, right? Uh, born the son of a watchmaker, Swabilius was introduced to precision machinery by his father, began working with him as a young boy as a watchmaker. He moved to the United States when he was 18 and settled in with his elder sister in Connecticut. He first worked at Marlin, uh, manufacturing barrels, barrel maker. His ability impressed uh, the people there, he was promoted a number of times during his tenure at, Mar tenure at Marlin, eventually becoming a gun designer uh, by the uh, when World War I was uh, kicking in. He was noted for his improvements on the Browning 1919 machine gun, lightening it substantially and increasing its rate of fire, allow allowing it to be used on aircraft. That was a huge... I've read about that before, and that was a huge... Um, undertaking of his uh, big accomplishment. Uh, he was also noted for being the first to synchronize a gas-operated machine gun through a plane's propellers, which used this camming system. When I was a kid, I, I swear to God, I was like like 13 years old, and I did like a science project for school, whatever. Like my father suggested that, and I actually, I actually used that and the mechanism of that in a uh, with a with a demonstration thing that I had or whatever for like the science fair, I actually studied that that way back in like the seventies. You know what I mean? It's interesting. It used like a camming system to uh, synchronize the the rate of fire with the propeller, so you could actually shoot right through the propeller. Interesting. Uh, after working at Marlin, he worked at Winchester, where he served as chief designer until nineteen thirty nine. Now here's the thing while that was going on, this is why I didn't start with high standard, because it starts here with him. While all of this was going on, he was working at Winchester, at Marlin and then at Winchester. He set up a tool making firm in 1926. So 
this is a, a, a tool, this is a firm that would supply tools for firearm making to these other, you know, these companies. Because, you know, he had this in in the industry and uh, maybe he saw a way to make money with a tool making firm. Well, this tool making firm began to produce firearms in 1932. Uh, when uh, he got these four other investors, they purchased the Hartford Arms Company and started their own company. High standard. Uh, he designed a semi-automatic pistol for the company, which would later become the highly successful Model B. And uh, during World War II, he designed a number of other weapons, some accessories for the war effort, silencers, some machine guns. The end of World War II, he was the second highest paid executive executive in the United States. What's the second time they're mentioning that? What is this all about the money? War, uh, while there were changes, ch charges of war profiteering. Oh, I see. Maybe there was an issue. While there were charges of war profiteering, Swabilius was cleared of all charges and commended for saving the United States millions of dollars in money relating to production methods. Okay. So I see there was some controversy. In his final years, Subilius' health declined, and he retired to be with his family. Uh, he would later die of throat cancer, with his personal fortune going to cancer and epilepsy research. See, you can't take it with you, Mr. Subilius. So high standard. Let's kick in over there. What do we got for high standard here? Founded in New Haven, Connecticut in 1926 as a supplier to the numerous firearms companies in the Connecticut Valley. Based in New Haven from 1932 to 1945, at which time it was relocated to suburban Hamden, Connecticut, where it continued to manufacture firearms from 46 through 77, at which time it moves to East Hartford, Connecticut from 77 to 84. In 1932, the company headed by Carl Gustav Sobelius purchased the Hartford Arms Company, Hartford Arms and Equipment Company, and began making 22 caliber pistols. During World War II, the company supplied 22 caliber pistols for basic pistol training and familiarization to the armed forces at the request of the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services. Uh, the Deputy Director for Research and, Research and Development, Stanley Lovell, the company also developed a silent flashless pistol for use by OSS agents behind enemy lines. Nice. Gotta get, I, I gotta have one of those. An example of the pistol can be seen at the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Presidential Library in Hyde Park, New York. Introduced in 1962, the high standard D100 and the later D101 and DM101 are Hamillus double action derringers. With half trigger guards and break actions, the double der barrel derringers were chambered for a 22 long rifle and 22 magnum and were available in blued nickel, silver, and gold plated finishes. They were discontinued in 84. In 1968, the company was acquired by the Leisure Group. A turbulent period followed due to the passage of the Gun Control Act of 1968. The company then relocated to East Hartford in 1977. In 1978, Clem. Confessore, company president, led a management buyout of High Standard from Leisure Group. In December 84, its assets were auctioned. Gordon Elliott, who had been the national parts distributor, purchased the 22 target pistols, the Crusader line, and the High Standard name and trademarks. And then uh, there's a couple of other stumbling blocks that lead to its final dissolvation in uh, 2018. And uh, that's about all the information we have. <laughs> that's about it. Let's take a close look at this thing. So, um, you know what's awesome about these? What's awesome about these is the quality. That's what it is. Just such awesome quality. And this sight. Let's get the, let me get the light. A little bit of a uh, better area. Sorry. Here we go. Let's take a closer look. Look at this. Look at this site, this target site on the back here. How awesomely adjustable that is. Look at that. And I'm telling you that every little micro click on this thing moves the point of impact so perfectly. 
that bolt face the extractor, the slide release, how smooth this is. High Standard Manufacturing Corp. Hamden, Connecticut. This was the Hamden period. Now with these things, they have a, uh, this is a uh, safety here. I'm going to be very, very rudimentary with my descriptions of the different models and the different things. So if you're an expert on these things, bear with me. I'm freely admitting that I don't know anything. But um, when I was going to buy this thing, this is as much as I knew. Knew that I didn't want to get an early one. I wanted to get a later one. I like the ones that had this button here. I'm going to show you what this does. I like the ones that had this. Because I know that this is what quickly releases the barrel. and You could swap barrels. I know the other ones, you could swap barrels too. There was just something about the way this one looked. that kind of dug that button like that. This was the era, the age that I wanted to get one in. And... Um, also, what turned me on to these was the, uh, the amount of accessories that it seemed was for these, uh, the, this, this Model 104, this, this era of them. <laughs> I could show you the different models. Let's get in here and just do that now before we even check that out any further. So, uh, is this where high standard starts here? Yeah, I guess so. So in our uh, Brownells encyclopedia, let's see what we got here. We got glossy pages. Here's the Brownells encyclopedia. Let's give them a little bit of credit. Awesome book. It's the only book I've been turning to lately on, in, in, on this channel, right? So uh, you could see they're breaking down different models here. And I'm not even going to profess to be able to explain all the differences between these two. But right here is where this one's at. Supermatic Citation 10 shot, 22 long rifle autoloader. New wide serrated steel forward steel trigger. And yeah, it is a pretty wide forward steel trigger on there. Easily detachable stabilizer, spring loaded, chrome vanadium steel firing pin. Choice of six and three quarter, eight inch or ten inch barrels, interchangeable barrels, custom adjustable trigger pull. That's right here. It's like this this um, Allen key. You can uh, set the trigger travel. Um, anti backlash trigger screw adjustment. Now I'm not sure. I guess that's the I guess that's the backlash adjustment right there. There's also an adjustment here for that you actually can um, adjust the trigger pull, like the pounds of the trigger pull, how light or how heavy the trigger pull is with this screw, which is pretty wild. So I'm not sure exactly which, I don't know if that's the custom adjustable trigger pull that they're talking about. Yeah, that must be it. An anti-backlash. Okay, so that's the custom adjustable trigger pull right here. And this would be the anti backlash trigger screw adjustment was right there double action safety not really sure what that means because it just it just has it has a safety rebounding firing pin one piece quick takedown barrel surefire magazine with concealed release it is a kind of the release is kind of concealed down here i love these mags these are like the highest quality magazines i've ever seen absolutely they, um, they, I think they're, they've been often copied too, like the way, just the way they function and the way they work, but never had one work this smooth and this awesome before. They're great. Uh, where are we? Non recoil wide rear sight with indexed positive click adjustments. Absolutely. Ramp front sight. Absolutely. Citation grade finish, diamond checkered laminated grips. These might be replacement grips. I'm not sure, but they do have the high standard emblem on here. So I don't know if they're an upgrade. Not sure. Um, and uh, that's it. It's listing different model numbers by, by numbers here. I don't know what's going on. But if we, uh, 
we take a look over here, now we see there's more models of Supermatic Tournament, Duramatic, Sport King, Sport King Lightweight, Deluxe Nickel, Sport King All Steel. Oh, see, I don't know anything about these things. It's revolvers too. So here's the uh, first one, that the one that he invented um, the, would be the B. See, that's how when I said I wanted to stay away from uh, that one. That is uh, what I'm talking about. I didn't want the uh, early one. But this is this Brownells book really has some real comprehensive information. I have a lot more information on what to do than I have. And uh, here is the military. See, there's another version. So this is what they called the um, military version right here. And the, by what they meant by military was that it had the same grip angle as the Colt 45, as the 45 caliber weapon that was adopted by our military. You could see the difference in the grip angle to this supermatic citation that's right here. That's just the regular target grip, let's say. So that is one big difference right there that if you're buying one of these you'd make a decision on which one you wanted here is the duramatic still not up to ours here is the high standard here we have supermatic or whatever right this says lever takedown model so apparently this is what i'm talking about there were ones with this lever takedown i the experts might say that these are better um but i for some reason didn't want one of those this is where my interests were my interests were in this guy it's got the button the button release Wait, is this it or am i on the wrong one am i on the right one no it's this one so what was this one then this is the sport king flight king field king Supermatic, right, but not the, not the uh, what does it say? Push button takedown. Field King Supermatic. And that's the 102. So now I'm confused. I thought I had the right one. And then we go right into, this is R100. Oh, these are this revolver. <laughs> uh, see, I, I'm not, I don't even know which one I'm supposed to be looking at here. It's... Uh, that has the adjustment. Well, this one doesn't have that adjustment screw back here. Right here. So that wouldn't be it. It wouldn't be the model 100 series push button takedown. The one that we have right here is this guy. Because there's the... There's that screw right there. So it's the high standard Supermatic starting with 102 series push button takedown. There you go. This is our guy. And uh, I looked for one that was like that. I didn't want the military grip. I wanted it like this. And they have a lot of crazy barrels and crazy accessories. I didn't want the thing looking like a Buck Rogers ray gun. You know, I just wanted it looking like a target pistol. And uh, that's what I got. So let's, uh, let's take a close look at this thing. So it has a slide very similar to like, you know, the Colt Woodsman. Where it's just this back back piece that slides, nothing else moves. This is all fixed. And this button right here, let's see if I could do it, because this does lock up kind of tight. But this gets pressed. See if this if this is tight, what you do is I'm glad it's tight actually because I want to be able to show you how I handle this. I tell you to press it against the table or something. I mean, how do you know what the what is the material that the table's made out of? I think that they make this plasticky side of this hammer for a reason. And the reason is for exactly that. Just the tap like that releases this. And then these barrels, get this button in real good. These barrels just lift right off. That's the coolest thing about these things is I, I, I always envisioned, you know, like I'd have a, diff, a longer barrel or a different kind of barrel. And then the, uh, the slide, just comes right off as easy as that as easy as that for you to clean the bolt face slide itself how awesome 
very very simple uh, mechanism and takedown gotta love it and oh the magazine I didn't take the magazine out that's why it's balking at going back on I just made it look bad because it, it really is so super smooth than the way it works but uh, you definitely got to remove the mag before you take it apart that is a prerequisite and then uh, getting it back together with the slide back you just drop this in and the same thing press the button and boom how cool is that i love the way these things function i love this barrel interchanging stuff and um these cutouts right here were for you could see that somebody at one point had had something on here because there's these set screws that screw in diagonally to hold stuff onto the barrel you also have these screws down here where you would screw weights on or other accessories but i don't know just the way it sits just like that i kind of love the way it looks i love these grips i love that grip angle and uh, it is an absolute pleasure to target shoot with because it just makes you look really good. If you could say that any pistol is accurate, like the pistol is accurate, you definitely would be on the mark talking about one of these. They are definitely, they're as accurate as any other pistol probably, but they make you accurate just by how comfortable it is that just a natural grip angle and uh, just the sights come just right to your eye perfectly and the balance the weight balance of it the trigger pull is exceptional and uh, here and I use see I always tell you I use the uh, realistic snap caps to show function we'll bust them out in a minute to show you how smooth this thing operates but you see how this brass this is a stinger brass I use the stinger brass because it seems to deform it doesn't balloon out as much so they fit inside bores um, to do testing it seems so I always hold on to my stinger brass for that this one's got a bunch of shots on it but still got some left you just pop these in and then you could do I'll show you how awesome this trigger pull is you could just tell by just this gentle squeeze look at that even the reset on it is like that's amazing well, yeah let's let's do that let's see what the reset looks like I could have done it right there let's check it out again unreal it really is time to check out our realistic snap caps and uh, See exactly how this magazine loads and how this thing functions using some uh, really cool function testing snap cap rounds. So this magazine, you get used to this heel release real quick. And uh, the quality of these magazines, second to none, has this thumb follower controller here that I love people really dig these uh, these types of magazines with this, this ability to relax the spring and the follower to get the rounds in easier it really is a great idea it makes it a breeze even way down here when you're doing number 10 is that all of them that's all of them it's a full mag. These things are completely inert. Don't even have a primer compound. And uh, the risk of sounding redundant, don't ever use live ammo when you're doing these types of function drills. You could tell right away. This thing's not fooling around when it comes to feeding. If you could feed a gun this slow under full power with all the uh, 
with with all the action movement, you know it's going to feed well. That is the true test of a precision gun, is that it could cycle the rounds, could cycle the snap caps that slow. If you're interested in picking up a set of these, they have a ton of different calibers. You can check out their website, use coupon code Milser Garage, one word, M-I-L-S-U-R-P-G-A-R-A-G-E, for 10% off your entire order. So, here's the part where you tear me apart in the comments, because you're like, you didn't mention, you didn't even talk about this, I don't, all I know is, I just shoot this thing, I love it, I don't think I'll ever have to get another high standard pistol. Again, I think this is, I think this is uh, just, this covers it all for me. It's a thing of beauty. And uh, even my page in my red book here, my hardbound red book, I just have the serial number, the caliber. Speaking of which, here's, um, I got a few things. Here's a list. High standard, kind of like had a running list of serial numbers. Didn't matter what model you had. They just kind of just ran with it from zero to, uh, you know, two million. And this is like a little dating guide that you could you could use. Um, but all I have in my book is serial caliber, um, semi-auto action, 10-round capacity, 5.5-inch barrel, model 104, made in 1963, Dealey Plaza Special. But on that note, we're going to call it quits on the high standard video on YouTube with the least amount of information. Thanks for all your new subscribers. You all stay tuned. We got some cool stuff on the way. Here's what I could tell you. My advice is if you're going to get a high standard pistol, this is exactly what setup you should get. Take care.